Fury is taught. Experience the six-episode event that's a game-changing spy thriller. We don't know who we can trust. It's an absolute masterclass. A riveting and intense drama. You're out of moves, Fury. Marvel at its best. You got to figure out which side you're on. Nick Fury in Marvel Studios' Secret Invasion. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my Secret Invasion Episode 3 trailer video. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs. A lot of people asking about some of the big twists in last week's episode, too. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, I'm doing videos for all the episodes. Be sure to subscribe to get them. We're still doing the giveaway for Disney Plus memberships. All you have to do is enter. Just be a subscriber and post all your theories in the comments below. I'll name a new winner later in the video, too. Careful for spoilers if you haven't seen through episode two yet, just because we'll be talking about everything that happened at the end of that episode. But a lot of you asking about the twist with Nick Fury's wife. Did he know that she was a Skrull? And what the director said and the producers is that Nick Fury knows in the script, they just didn't have a moment in the scene where he comes back to her, where he verbally acknowledges that she's a Skrull. It would also be kind of defeatist if he didn't know that she was a Skrull. Like what? Twist upon twist upon twist. Like how many twists do you have in this scene? Part of the idea in the episode is that he was arguing with Talos about integration. Like, there's no way that all these scrolls could live on planet Earth. And the irony is meant to be that he has been living with a scroll wife this whole time. And for those of you asking about his more personal relationship with Gravik, because it seemed like he had something closer between the two of them. And that's part of the reason why Gravik hates him so much in present day, so much more than all the other humans. I do believe in this flashback scene that the scroll woman who introduced the young graphic to Nick Fury is Nick Fury's wife. This, the way they put her in the credits doesn't actually call that out. I think they're just holding back on putting her in the credits till like later episodes. I'm assuming at some point after this 1997 flashback, that's when they actually got married. But it seems like she personally took an interest in Gravik, and that led to Nick Fury taking a personal interest in young Gravik, and he became kind of like a surrogate son to them, probably, and that's why they became so close, and why him leaving became so much more personal to Gravik than, say, like any of the other humans that had been helping them out. Like, it sounds like he hates Talos, but not as much as he hates Nick Fury, and that might be because he became his surrogate father, like his adoptive father. A lot of you also wondering if Nick Fury now has like a half human, half scroll son. I don't think that's the case. I think the closest thing he has to a scroll son is Gravik, but he's not his biological son. It's all very cats in the cradle because they have that father daughter tension relationship between Guy Amelia Clark's character and Talos, his biological daughter. So I think the Gravik, the Nick Fury relationship is meant to be a parallel for that. You can kind of see the direction this is headed too. Like Gravik seems like he's absolutely committed to this secret invasion and Nick Fury is absolutely committed to stopping it. So it's probably only going to end one way with Gravik dying. I think they want to build this emotional connection between the two of them so that when Gravik does eventually die, it becomes this very tragic moment for Nick Fury. Like he's happy to stop Gravik, but the damage has been done and he's losing his son, so to speak. But just starting at the beginning of the trailer, there's a new scene of Sonya Fallsworth, what looks like MI6 team, finding a large warehouse with bodies of important people the scrolls have replaced. It's the same warehouse that Amelia Clark's Gaia character is looking at in different trailers. The whole idea is that it's meant to be way bigger, like vast, compared to the ones that we saw in previous episodes. Like in episode one, they showed you a small one with a couple world leaders being replaced, a couple important people. This is probably just meant to be one of many different giant warehouses because you remember Talos revealed that there are about a million scrolls on planet Earth and a good chunk of them are working with Gravik and the other scrolls as part of the secret invasion. So these are just all the bodies of the really important people that they've had to keep around because they have to harvest their memories. Then we see Nick Fury's wife, which seems like Vara, and Amelia Clark's Gaia in the middle of a fight together. It seems like Amelia Clark has fully turned sides now, and Nick Fury's wife had just come onto the team to help them out too. Like, she's not going to be hanging out at her house while this is all going down. It would make sense that if Nick Fury was going to get married to someone, he would marry someone with a particular set of skills. Someone who's capable of taking care of themselves, so Nick Fury doesn't have to watch over her at every single moment. You also kind of wonder what was going on between the two of them when he was on his space station just like chilling out for a couple years. Like, was he still in contact with her? Like, what was going on? If you were married to someone and you checked out for about two years, your wife would probably ask you for a divorce. There's a scene of Rhodey with his security detail looking worried running through a building like they're in the middle of an attack. But do they still want you to think that it's normal Rhodey and not a squirrel pretending to be Rhodey and who's attacking them? Like, is it a graphic attack from his group or does it have something to do with Nick Fury and Talos and their side of things? 
What I'm assuming is they're waiting till like the very end of the series to make the roadie reveal because I think they're slowly finding out about these other world leaders like the British Prime Minister and some of the World Security Council that have been replaced and that'll be the big twist first like oh man they're all scrolls we need to stop them. While Nick Fury and Talos are still trying to get Rhodey's help because he is one of the Avengers who's still around, one of the people that you would go to, only to find out maybe, you know, dot, 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 at the end of the series, that he was also a scroll this whole time. Not this whole time, not since Marvel Phase 1, but for a good long while in the MCU. For those of you asking, like, wouldn't Vision, wouldn't the more powerful Avengers characters be able to detect that he was a scroll? The idea they explain in the series, or like the workaround for this, is that the longer the scrolls have been impersonating someone, the harder it is to detect them. So I think that's why he's been a scroll for a long time, because otherwise, yeah, some of those other more powerful Avengers would have probably spotted him out pretty soon. This scene seems like a human group, maybe Sonya Fallsworth's group, breaking into a scroll control building, blasting through the window here. This scene of them attacking the Russian could be from a completely different scene, who looks kind of like he's turning into Talos. It's kind of hard to tell. It kind of looks like when he's transitioning between different identities, he's turning into what looks like Ben Mendelsohn. This scene, we can now say, is from the meeting that Talos just asked that other scroll council member, or former council member, to set up with Gravik. She said Gravik would kill him, but Talos wanted to meet with him under the pretense that it was going to be about his daughter, Gaia. So he wanted Gravik to come to the meeting, thinking that he'd just be pleading with him to let his daughter go, not wanting her to get caught in the crossfire. And Gravik has the other scrolls on his team here at the meeting change into him as a show of force, and the idea that even if he does try to attack him and try to kill Gravik himself, they just use one of the other scrolls on the team to replace him so that the movement, his secret invasion movement, wouldn't die. It'd be like a freedom fighter, like if you want to make a Terminator reference, it'd be like John Connor being killed and then somebody replacing him, pretending to be him, so that the human's movement didn't die out. So Graphic is trying to tell Talos here that there's nothing he can do to stop Secret Invasion. Like, no matter what you do, even if you kill me, the movement will continue. This will continue. The other interesting thing here, too, is if you look in the background of their meeting in this restaurant, all the banners here are of important people in world history, which is meant to be a metaphor for how the scrolls have replaced a lot of important world leaders in present day. And based on that scene in episode two, it seems like they've already replaced a bunch of the most powerful world leaders. It's just that before those scrolls had been content to live status quo, like we'll just live here on planet Earth pretending to be humans and kind of orchestrating things in our favor slowly. But Gravik's thing is that he wants to literally get rid of all humans. I'm not sure who this scroll is supposed to be, but he's covered in scroll blood, just screaming at a bunch of other people. This is Gaia meeting with Nick Fury, telling him he's out of moves. It seems like she's started to fully change sides, like she's now working on Team Nick Fury. If you couldn't tell, it seems like their meeting is also taking place in that same room, the same location from the 1997 flashback where he made his initial promise to them. Then this attack seems like it's happening later in the series. I don't think this is happening from episode three. It's like from one of the future episodes. And it's the scrolls, like graphics group attacking the president, U.S. president's convoy. And it's him trying to kill the president and replace him with his super scrolls. Nick Fury, Talos, and Gaia trying to stop him. Rhodey is also in this convoy too. You can see Gravik using Groot-like powers, so it's kind of hard to tell when you're talking about Super Scrolls and the way the series is doing them, if they're all getting powers of all these different characters, kind of like the comic book Super Scroll, who got all the powers of the Fantastic Four, or if they're just saying that each of the Super Scrolls only gets one of the powers. Gravik at least gets the Groot powers. Cole Obsidian's powers would just make one of them more Hulk-like. I know a lot of people are like, will they just steal the Hulk's blood? Because that was a big plot point during She-Hulk. Someone getting a hold of their gamma-infused blood to turn themselves into a Hulk. There's also the Red Hulk storyline with Thunderbolt Ross and Captain America 4. So I don't know if they're going to do Hulk stuff in this. Like, we're already doing a whole bunch of Hulk stuff pretty soon. Frostbeast powers would just be frost-based, cold-based powers, like you saw in the Thor movies. Extremists would make one of them extremely strong and give them near instant regeneration. It seems like in the next couple of episodes, they'll just go around stealing the rest of these different superpowered beings' body parts. Like this case seems like it's Cole Obsidian's severed hand, so they don't have all the parts yet. This scene of Nick Fury walking through the woods seems like it's him literally going to Gravik's power plant base where they're making their super scrolls to confront him. Like you see him walking into the room where the super scroll device is, getting ready to fight Gravik. One of the big smokestacks collapses. That could be a result of the device activating or just something that happens during their fight. This scene is at Nick Fury's gravesite or his fake gravesite where he keeps backup weapons in his trademark eye patch. He also has a meeting with Sonya Fallsworth here too. 
there's a bunch of stuff going on here. We're only about halfway through the series after episode three, so there's still a lot of big reveals. They're probably holding a couple big ones back. Like I said, I think the big one they're holding on to is the Rhodey reveal, if he really is going to wind up being a scroll. And it definitely does seem like he is going to wind up being a scroll. Now the real question is, is how many other big Avengers level characters, like big MCU characters are also scrolls? Like is Val a scroll? Is Sharon Carter power broker a scroll? Let me know what you think in the comments below, but my full episode three video will post next week after they release it. There were also a bunch of big trailers that just released too. I'll do a Dune part two trailer video that should post next. And because Indiana Jones five is also coming out, I'll also do at least one Indiana Jones five video. Martfer12, congratulations, you're the giveaway winner from my last big secret invasion giveaway. Please email me on the about page of my channel on desktop so I can get your contact details. Everyone click here for all my secret invasion episode videos and click here for those new trailers. I'll update the link as soon as I post those. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.